my name is Rian Santana over here at Hip Hop Weekly. I'll be conducting this interview with you guys on tonight. How are you guys doing? We fantastic. We are fantastic. Good. Let's tell everyone how you two met and how long you two been together. Go ahead. No, 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 you got. I did it the last time. Go. You got. I did it last time. Go. I mean, we had we so how we met. We had mutual friends. Um, uh, we we've been in you know uh, radio TV business for um, you know a long time, double digit years. So we had um, mutual friends. Um, so we so we knew we knew of each other. We knew about each other, and um, uh, I know I'm skipping. But I, I, I know that I was trying to, I felt like I was at a standstill. I was at the ceiling and I needed to get through the ceiling. I needed to punch the hole into the ceiling to get through. And um, I wanted to, um, I just, I know she had a lot of uh, traction in the business. Uh, she had great connects, uh, you know, and actually she was really close to the person who actually hired me in radio about 18, 19 years ago. And, um, you know, so I was, we, we knew each other, kids went to the same school and I'm like, hey, listen, I need you. Can you help me? Can you work with me? I need you. Nobody from Baltimore, I had to get out of the city, blah, 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 blah. And then finally, you know, um, somebody said, you know, I've seen, I'm seeing this guy work. Maybe you should give him a shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, she gave me a shot. And the crazy part was the first time we sat down and had a meeting, uh, you know, somebody was like, hey, uh, your girlfriend just went to the bathroom. I'm like, this ain't my girlfriend. It's the first time we ever sat down and, you know what I'm saying, really had uh, really had any, any dialect or any, you know, even talk to each other. And, uh, you know, um, it ended up, you know, rolling into what it is now. And that was what? Four or five years ago. Five years ago. Right. I'm bad with dates. I'm terrible. I'm terrible five with dates. Five years. Yeah, it was five years ago. Actually, actually, no, 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 no. Um, this is twenty. Yeah, five years ago because it was in December. Um, and it was in December, and Keon. It was right before Keon passed. Remember? I got you. I got you. So it was the beginning of December. 2015, right. so five years, five years ago, yeah? I know that was a lot to get to, I'm to sorry. answer your question, <laughs> I, I apologize. Because say, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, you started out being like this big media uh, executive, like you're very, like history being on so many different platforms, you know, the longevity within your career. How did you get started in media? Like what inspired you? Um, actually, I kind of stumbled into it, if, if I was to be honest with you. I went to school on a basketball scholarship, um, wanted to be a doctor. Um, my dad um, is really the type of guy that if you believed in doing something, you do it to the, you, you know, to your fullest. So he sent me with one of his friends that was a doctor to tag along with him. Mm, all of the blood and the gore kind of turned me away. And about a month later, I hurt myself playing basketball and I was in a, a speech class. And in the speech class, somebody was telling me about, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a journalist major, blase, blase. And I had a great friend of mine who was actually my mentor to, the, to, the, to this day who worked at the NBC affiliate in Maryland. And she was like, well, why don't you do an internship with us? I was like, sure, I'll do an internship with you guys. Did the internship after three and a half. And the rest is history. You know, I started in local news, ended up in entertainment, dibbed and dabbed in radio several times and done a lot of production for like on a bigger scale for different um, entities like BT and Series XM and things of that nature. So I've just had a full plethora um, in my current um, outlets and personalities too, because 
as a result of working with the different outlets, I started building relationships with different personalities and then produced different things for, you know, um, some, some very well-known celebrities. So Jay, on to you being this big celebrity DJ, you know, you worked with a lot of people as well. So I'm going to ask you, what inspired you to become a DJ? It was either, it was either music or sports. Um, I, I'm, I am a heavy sports guy, right? Like I'm still a heavy sports guy. Like I'm, before I got on, I'm listening to, you know, podcasts or whatever the case may be. And um, I couldn't rap. You know, I couldn't rap. I, I, I wasn't that good of a break dancer. So um, DJing um, ended up coming natural. You know, guy around in the neighborhood who was like the guy that everybody really, he he took me under his wing. They used to let me DJ in the house and that sort of thing. So it just kind of came and, you know, I was able to get my own turntables. And that and that sort of thing, and um, you know, it just kind of fell into place. It, it, it took a minute to, to get on, but you know, nothing happens overnight. So um, that's what a DJ. That's what a DJ came. Yeah. Do you think you would ever go into like you know that sports broadcasting field, since you are such a big sports fan? You know what? I, I, I am. I, I was gonna tell you put the light on. Um, no. I I really uh, want to do both, and I know nobody has probably ever done both or merged the two. But um, what was the question? Um, they're talking about uh, you know DJing and going into sports broadcast. Oh, okay. You know I really do. Uh, if if I could go to my book bag and show you, I got notes. I got I got notes. What happened? What this guy did before? What this team did? How many times? They were on a roll three days in a row, three games. Like, so um, it, it is a it is a passion of mine because I play sports. That's where the mentality came from. The reason why I won DJ was because the sports, me playing sports as a kid and in high school, that mentality from my coaches was the reason why I was able to win as a DJ. Okay, so what's your favorite sports team? Um, between football, basketball, um, whatever. <laughs> so, so I'm a I'm a diehard Laker fan. I'm a diehard okay. Laker fan since okay. since early. I ain't, I ain't gonna say these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna age myself, but um, been a diehard Laker fan before LeBron got there. Um, really have have gotten a new newfound respect since LeBron has been there. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm definitely football was my first love. Um, but I don't necessarily have a favorite football team because I play fantasy and and I and I sports bet as well. So there's no emotional attachment to any team other than the purple and gold. Well, I'm a Maryland fan too, and I like the Orioles, but the Orioles suck. We <laughs> we we could all beat the Orioles at this, at this time. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, but I am I am a I'm a fan of of all sports. I mean, I, I'll even watch, you know, the little game where you uh, oh, what is that corn, game? It's called cornhole. When yeah, you go corn to the, when you go uh -huh. to the park or you go to the beach and they got little, you and just little, throw it, yeah. throw the sandbags yeah. in. That's a sport on ESPN. I yeah. know one day I got caught BT award a couple of years ago, <laughs> and I was like, damn, this is. And like then, we're sitting there watching. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I'm like, you gotta, we gotta watch this. Like <laughs> you gotta watch this. This is, I, I was locked in, but I love to compete. I love to compete. Mm -hmm. Everything's a, a competition. No, you can't win everything, but um, everything is a competition. Nobody remembers second place. So tell us about you know your company franchise group. It, it's a, it's a lot that um, <laughs> it, it entails a lot. Um, I really, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's the music and DJ side. Um, it's also um, what we give back to the community. We do toy drives. We do backpack and sneaker drives. We'll, we'll be giving back um, regardless of what we're doing. If if we in if we on the valley or if we in, you know if we in the valley or we in the peak, regardless, we still kind of give back and pass those blessings forward. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
you know, I just think is that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to help one another. So, um, you know, we give back, uh, I guess, the philanthropist part of it. You forgot the clothing um, side of it. No, I wasn't, I wasn't done. Um, <laughs> you don't uh, you know I'm about also the a big advocate health-wise. Right, right. And, and, and you know, um, that was the last part I was going to get to, but um, I, I have MS, so um, I'm big health-wise, workout-wise, that sort of thing, you know, uh, no sodas, no, no juice, you know, um, you know, water and uh, occasional glass of, well, glass of wine. I was going to say a Glass occasion. of wine, you know, a uh, little vodka, maybe a bourbon, maybe a bourbon with my cigar, but, um, you know, try to eat real clean. Then we have that is a, a lot to that as well, but I do love fat. I, I wanna I, I wanna look good. I like people to look good, that sort of thing. So we also have a uh clothing line as well. So um it, it it's hard because it's just really us two, but um, mm -hmm. you know, we we make a way. So earlier this year you guys have an organization called DJ's Vote. What made you start this organization? Mm -hmm. I'm a DJ and I, I do care about what happens in our community. Um, and Cassandra has a, a real big political, really political and religious background. And, um, you know, a, some of the, a lot of stuff that I didn't know, um, you know, recently because of who's in office, what's going on, the climate in the, you know, in, in our country right now, um, she was able to kind of teach me a lot. She learned me a lot, basically. And, um, she taught me a lot about, you know, what's going on. And I uh, thought that it would make sense because I DJ and, you know, I care about, the, uh, you know, politics and what's going on. And I think that sometimes people really feel like it's just one side to us as DJs and as entertainers that all we care about is entertaining and making a dollar. And it's way more toward than that. You know, it's way more toward than that. So that's where that kind of came up at. And like for me, my background is uh, my family background or family portfolio is heavy in the civil rights movement. My dad was big in the civil rights movement. Plus, he's a Baptist pastor. Um, a lot of um, my close family members, you know, were in the march. Uh, I'm very, very, very um, into politics because that's how I was raised. I was raised with pol politicians and preachers. So with that said, I've always understood what, it, what my voice meant. And with Jay being a DJ and us to use our voice in a positive instead of sitting back silently. Mm -hmm. Love and business on lock. Now I know for a fact that does belong to you guys. What is the idea behind it? Like, what made you uh, want to create this? So this was this was this this young lady's brainchild. You know <laughs> what I mean? To the left of me, um, she is really super creative with um, with with ideas and and, and thoughts and, and and things of that nature. And um, it was it was her brainchild. Sometimes, I'm like, yo, would you come up with that? You know, like, would you come up with that? But what we were starting to notice is, or what we noticed was everybody was kind of like reaching out to us about couple, you know, about us being a couple and they know we work together and they know that, you know, she does a lot in the industry. They know I, you know, I've done a lot in the industry and they know that, you know, we work together and, you know, light bulb went up top of that head of hers, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, she she came up with the idea, and um, you know, it it, it worked. You know, it it, it worked. It, it, it kind of caught natural fire by itself. And that they they the things that really work. Like when they they naturally just happen. You know what I mean? Instead of you forcing an issue and th things of that nature. You know what I mean? When it's when it's authentic. When it happens authentically, it is usually a, a dub. It's usually a win. Oh, 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 oh,